Hey guys, here today we've just got our latest 3D printer from AM and we've just taken it out of the box now. As you can see, it comes pretty much pre-assembled. There are one or two things that we have to do first to assemble it completely so that it is ready to use. So the first thing we need to do is go ahead and remove our back section here and whatever else is preventing the machine from you know moving around from transport they've secured a few things so before you go ahead and switch on you need to pay attention and remove those items so that you can actually move the moving parts so here we're going to start with our accessory and toolkit which comes with the printer standard and what we're going to need first off is these side cutters or cutters that you get with it we get this tool here that removes our print head and you've got double-sided with an angle. Um, this helps quite a bit with removing the printhead and I'll show you what that looks like. So this is a spare printhead that you get with your printer and this is a 0.8. You can change it to a 0.6 or 0.4 or bigger, just go straight to a one mil. And that basically, that number is the whole size. So that's the, the size of the plastic that comes out once it's printed. The bigger the hole is, so the bigger nozzle size you choose, the bigger the plastic comes out of the head and you lose less detail. Whereas if you go to a smaller nozzle size, you can increase your detail for smaller projects. So it's always nice to be able to use this tool, slide it over the head just like that, and then you can go ahead and unscrew it from the print head, which we'll show you just now. Finally, we also get a micro switch and this is basically going to stop the gantry from moving and it's going to be its limit switch basically and there is more than one located on your printer that just stops the gantry from moving or it's a reset button so this is nice to have in case you break the system the last bit that we get in our toolkit here is lubrication gel uh, now this you're going to put on moving parts that you hear maybe squeaking um, and it's you know more of a maintenance thing this I wouldn't use straight out of the box until you maybe hear a squeaking noise then maybe consider using some of this lubrication and again you're going to use maybe just a pin prick and then make sure you lather it around the area that you're going to be lubricating um, and then what we also get here is just a ordinary PVP glue stick which is like your normal print um, this you can also use to put on the print bed to have the print actually stick to the bed so it doesn't get knocked off while you're printing. So you've got a choice of this as well as your liquid glue. The last thing that we get in our kitchen as an accessory or replacement part is our CR Touch um, arm. Now what this does is it sits on the inside of a machine and the bed and the printer are supposed to automatically level themselves according to this machine's uh, capabilities. Now basically what it does is it goes along the bed and it goes and does a little touch and then it moves to another corner and does a little touch and then moves to another corner and does a little touch until it's done all four corners and the middle and then it basically calibrates the head so it knows what level the bed is. So in case you by accidentally break this, you know, brush your hand underneath and snap the plastic tip off, you've got a spare which is very nice because without this, your printer will not work. All right, so that covers the toolkit and accessories that we get. So the first thing we're gonna need is our cutters, and this is to cut off any cable ties that are restricting the machine, as well as this part that we need here at the back that holds up our plastic. So we're gonna start from the back and move forward. So the first thing we need to do is take out our uh, plastic holder. So we'll cut the cable ties here that are holding it together because we won't need these. And try not to cut any actual cables that are wires that you do need. Um, so far from what I can see, it just looks like three. Okay, now that we've got that out, we need to now attach this to the actual frame, which is just two bolts holding it at the bottom. So we'll unscrew those by hand, and then we'll need an Allen key to do the rest. Oh, 
All right, now that this has been assembled, the next thing I'm going to show you before we switch on anything is go ahead and put your filaments in, but you're not going to do that now. All I'm doing is showing you how. So you go ahead. Now this is a, an old roll that I've got. You're going to unwind it from the top and then you're going to feed it through the back of this little hole inside our sensor, the run out sensor. And once you fed it through there, you're going to take it all the way through the top hole here and there's a left and right. Once you've taken that through, you're then going to feed it into your motor and you're going to depress this lever so that you can push it through. And you want to make sure that you can see it go all the way into the clear pipe. But we're not going to leave this in here now because we have to have it through the sensor. And we've got other things that we need to do first before we can even think about switching this on and actually loading our filament because there is a proper way that we have to do it on the control panel. So for now, we're just going to lift this back up, pull it through slowly, and we'll just leave this hanging here for now. Okay, guys, the next thing we need to do here is remove any bolts, cable ties, or any foam that might be in the way from transit that will prevent the machine from moving around and actually start printing. So the first thing we need to do is go ahead and remove the screws in the front that prevent the head from moving left and right. We're gonna take the Allen key that was provided with the set and we're going to unscrew and there's a bolt on either side and you're just gonna unscrew it. And then right at the back, there's a little nut that you kind of have to turn to the side in order to pull out the entire bolt, just like that. So this piece here is going to be vertical and that's what holds the bolt in place. You just have to turn it slightly so that you can do it horizontal so that it can pull out of the channel. And then do the same for the other side for this one here. Next thing we have to do is move our clips that are holding the actual um, glass to the bed. We have to move them from the side to the front. Otherwise, when your printer is moving forward, it's going to hit the two that are on the side, which are not going to work. Now what we need to do is go ahead and grab your cutters that came with it, and we're going to kind of cut off what came with the box um, with some places where it's been glued with some cable ties. That's what secured it to the bottom of the crate. So we no longer need that. This is all loose. So we're going to go ahead, lift this up, and just cut the four or six that you have underneath. All right, so now that we've done that, now everything is allowed to move and can move freely. The last thing is, if you're going to be setting this up on a table that could possibly be out of place and not level, you can go and adjust all four feet, screwing them in and out until you've got your actual printer level so it doesn't shake on the bed. Like here, it is perfect, it's not going anywhere. If you want it taller or shorter, then just adjust the feet in all four corners. And you can do that by hand by just lifting up one corner and twisting it accordingly to the direction that you need it up or down. Now that we've finished our unboxing of this, and it's all set up, ready to go. The next thing we need to do is plug this baby in, switch on, and we can get to the next process, which is auto leveling the bed. So we go ahead, plug in our kettle plug. And before we even switch this on, we have to make sure that our machine is set to 220 volts, which we can see over here is our area where we either have to flip it from 110 to 230 and that's exactly what we need we do not want it on 110 otherwise we will damage this machine that is an american standard we are 230 volts so now that that is correct we can go ahead and switch on now that we have switched it on and we're at the main screen here i'm just going to quickly explain what's actually on the front here and then we'll go straight to our auto leveling which is on the second screen We've got our bed, which is currently at zero temperature. The temperature on the left 32, that's what it has been set to for preheat, which can be changed. Then you've got your extruder one, and these you have obviously one extruder, but you've got two colors, and that's the extruder heat for both. Um, and then from there, you've got tool setting and printing. Now you're going to click directly on printing if the memory sticks put in already, but we are going to be going to tool and from there we're going straight to auto level 
which is what we have to do before we can even think about either adjusting temperature, adjusting our uh, bed temperature, nozzle temperature, and our speed of our print, the fan, any of that we cannot do until we've done auto level, which is making sure our bed is level for printing. So you go ahead and push auto level. Now the machine will come and auto home here to the corner, which it's currently doing. It's gonna hit its first micro switch and then it'll hit its second one here in the corner. There we go, then it'll do its third, which is its Z axis. Okay, now it's gonna start the process. If we have a look at our CR touch sensor here on the right, you'll see it's got a little plastic nipple that protrudes, then it will touch the bed and the magnet will activate and it will retract back into the sensor, allowing it to get the heart of the bed in this area. Now it's going to repeat it in many different areas. This will take some time. So go get yourself a coffee and just wait for it. All right, guys, now that you've seen exactly how to unbox this and we've done the auto leveling on this machine, there's a lot of things that we still need to go ahead and calibrate on that actual control panel, you know, temperature, speed, so on, so that we can get this thing actually printing. And there's a lot that I need to show you on how to actually generate a G-code for this printer, which is your print file. So keep your eyes peeled for the next video and thank you for watching.